Um, one mistake that I, I often see job seekers make is not having a strategic approach to their search. They'll, a lot of times they'll say, hey, you know, I did sales in Web 2, so I want to come in and do sales in Web 3. And, uh, you know, that's not a, a, a winning strategy at all. In this approach, you'll have a high rate of rejection, which will negatively impact your confidence and affect the signals that you give off in the interview. So um, I, I've created a, a framework, a simple framework, that can help you take a more calculated approach to this. And I like to call it the ecosystem segment product funnel. So, you know, we're here at ETH Denver, right? So we obviously know that each ecosystem has a different kind of vibe, a different mission, and a different set of values that create the culture of that you know, ecosystem, right? So step one, identify which culture resonates with you, which community f hits home for you, and where you feel the most comfortable. Start there. Step two, um, you're going to want to, you know, within each different, each ecosystem, there's a bunch of different segments. And I'm talking about like DeFi, infrastructure, or consumer, right? That's just to name a few. So you want to look at what segment are you interested in working in and then to go one step deeper within these segments, obviously there are plenty of products, many of which are competing, doing the exact same thing, just a different team, or maybe have slight differentiators uh, between each other. So now you can do a focus search where you're honing in directly on the products that are solving problems that you are interested in solving, and you can come in. You know, now you can have a format to do your research on which products you believe in and which products you're passionate about. And we'll come back to that later of how that's going to manifest you know, in the interview process to help you. Cool. So let's talk about resumes for a second. I'm going to circle back to Lauren, uh, the girl I was talking about that went to Dflow, right? And so when I was working with Lauren, I came up with this concept of the extra clip for the resume. So what is the extra clip? So what I did not tell you when I mentioned Lauren is that on the side from her sales job at the institutional crypto company, she runs a fucking hilarious and amazing uh, crypto Twitter Anon account, which has a ton of followers, a ton of engagement, and she's very influential of uh, shaping narratives and knows other KOLs and all these, uh, and you know, and it's a very valuable tool for social media marketing, which is super hot right now um, in the job market. So what we did was we basically used that side hustle of her Twitter account and created a marketing kind of bulleted experience that like similar to what you would put on your resume for a, a job that you had, right? So what you do is, you know, now you have this Twitter marketing extra clip that you can you know, add on and load up the clip when you're applying for jobs that that is relevant to and kind of, you know, plug and play where appropriate, right? So I think having an extra clip if you're making a pivot is, is, is a great idea. And if you don't have that, you'll be forced to customize it every single time for every job description, which, which can be really time consuming and likely no one really, realistically, people don't do that. So you'll probably just go with your boring CV 1.0, which will not be as effective as if you had CV 2.0, which is loaded with the clip. I want to tell you guys a quick story. I have about five more minutes here. I want to tell you guys a quick story about a freemium example, um, kind of building off of what I, how I described Will approached me and offered me something for free. This one is... Uh, disclaimer, don't try this at home. Uh, it doesn't work for everyone. This is pretty badass, but it's a great story to tell. So I had a guy, a uh, young guy coming out of college that was really interested in this one company called Anti-Metal. Big up, big up Matt from Anti-Metal. And so he saw that they were hiring for a BD role. And what he did was, before even applying to this job, he went and he created a spreadsheet with a whole bunch of leads he built a template message, and he, and he hit up these people on the lead sheet, and he actually landed a couple of calls. So uh, one particular guy, he pitched, and the call went well, and the person was interested in the product. Again, disclaimer, 
I personally wouldn't want anyone pitching up top services that doesn't work for me. So this might not work for everyone, but it was really cool that the call went well with the, with the potential buyer. And in his application for the role at Anti-Metal, he screenshotted the conversation. You know, he sent over the spreadsheet with all the leads and he shared details about how the conversation went and offered to make an intro uh, to a client before he made an application. As you can imagine, he was hired within 24 hours for the exact job that he wanted. Uh, it's, I just love to tell that story. I was so impressed by it. And uh, yeah, be, be careful with that one, but it, it does work. And you know, the principle applies, offer something for free, sh give them a reason to talk to you, right? So let's go back and do resumes for a second. Quick couple of do's and don'ts. Um, I'll start with the do's. Unless you've been working in blockchain since 2013, which I imagine like most of you would be so rich that you wouldn't be sitting here in these seats if that was the case. Um, and if not, it's an even bigger problem, obviously. But unless you've been working in blockchain for 10 plus years, then there's really not much, much of a reason for the resume to be more than one page. I think when you're able to be concise, it signals that you understand the context of the value you bring in relation to the opportunities that you want, and you know how to hone in and specifically talk about that. So that's why I think the resume should be one page. Another one, uh, it's, it's, it's basic, but a lot of people don't do it, is embed links in there. So for example, like in crypto, we obviously value startup experience super heavily, right? So when you, work, when you have a career working with startups, many of them are probably unrecognizable. They're not name brands that people know, and that's fine. But in that case, embed a link so we can do our research quickly. Embed a link on your LinkedIn profile. Embed a link on your email so we can just reach out to you with one click. Simple best practices, PDF, clean and easy. Use PDFs for your resume. And one of the most you know, important points that I like to drive home when I review resumes is a lot of people like to put on the top of the resume a professional summary of their career and everything they've, de everything they've done. For me, I think what resonates much more with founders, especially in Web3, is instead of that uh, professional summary, turn it into a mission statement or an objective. This is your opportunity to display your passion, your excitement for so specifically, ideally, what they're working on, right? And I like to frame it at the top of the resume. What you're doing is you're framing the mind of the reader. So I like to frame it as this is where I'm going. These are the building. And then as you look down, these are the building blocks to how I'm going to get there. And this role is a step to me achieving my goals personally of what I want to work on, what problems I want to solve. So lead with a mission statement, not a summary. My advice. Um, do not, do not list everything you've ever done at any job on your bullet points. Like, list what's necessary. Again, it signals that you're doing a lot here. You don't, you don't understand what people want to hear about, what's valuable. And if you can be strategic about what details you include, like, that shows that you get it. You get what they want from you. I don't need, like, how many meetings you've set in, like, month 16 that you're at the company like just unnecessary details not a good signal don't overdo it with the creative designs and colors and be all fancy trying to capture people's attention we're looking for the meat and potatoes of the resume i don't need all that extra stuff you know it's cool if you're a designer but other than that like don't overdo it don't try too hard not a good signal uh, another thing, not a good signal, optimizing for keywords. We can tell when you're doing that, when you're just listing every technology and like, it, that's some super Web 2 shit. Um, not the vibe in Web 3. Like, I, I, don't overdo it, again. Uh, don't include headshots or photos. Honestly, I think it's quite common in, in Europe. I've seen that a lot, but it's no need for it. Um, definitely do not include your physical street address. I shouldn't have to be saying this, but that resume is going to go through a lot of different hands and a lot of people are going to see it. Do you really want people knowing where you live? It's not necessary. It doesn't add anything. Don't put your address there. And the worst of all, one thing you definitely do not want to do is have that key skills section where it just lists all the technologies like proficient in Microsoft Word. Really, bro? Come on, dog. No, we don't need that. Don't give me that, you know, 
don't give me that, that section listing. I use Google Workspace, like, no need. And so lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about interviewing. So, oh, I only have 30 seconds, so I'm going to run through real quick. So, okay, tell your story we touched on. I, I think the most important, if I had to touch one thing from this slide, I think it's be authentic, right? And, and here's why. When a hiring manager or a founder is making a decision to bring you on, the number one factor by far that they care about is trust. Can I trust this person to be a good teammate? to you know, be ethical, and can I trust that I can leave him with something, him or her, and they're gonna do the right thing. And my number one tip, I have 10 seconds, my number one tip on how to do that is be vulnerable, ex be, be confident to express your, your fears, mistakes you've made in the past, what you learned, and things that maybe you're afraid of going forward. Being vulnerable, everyone's felt that. Every founder, everyone, most people working in Web3 have taken a risk and been burned. That's actually a good sign. That means you're an, uh, you have an entrepreneurial mindset. And again, to bring it all the way full circle, that's like something that it's an underlying principle that we can all relate to, uh, taking risks. And it happens that you get burned sometimes. So don't be afraid to be vulnerable. It's a chance to show authenticity, and it connects to the audience. Thank you so much, Ethan, for having me. Salute.